So uh, again, Inui is really, really special. There, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. There's a lot of people in the boxing world that respect Inui and what he's done. But if you're someone like me, I'm saying, hey, let's get him. I'm not, I don't think he's going to lose, but let's get him out of that, out of his own backyard. Boxing pros have revealed their pick for the upcoming Naoya Inoue versus Luis Neri fight. Meanwhile, numerous former combatants, journalists, and enthusiasts hold the conviction that to truly make a mark in this sport, Inoue must thrive on American turf. Former two-time welterweight champion Sean Porter told ProBox, If Inoue's goal is to be a star in boxing, he has to come to the United States. While a fighter may carve out a legacy elsewhere, it lacks the same allure unless their triumphs shimmer under the neon lights of Las Vegas. I, I follow that, 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 that phrase, to each his own, you know? It, it, everybody's looking for the next star. Everybody's talking about how much money you can make and how many fans you can have and things like that. We really don't know what Inoue's... What, what what his goals are. Are his goals to be the star in boxing? If his goal is to be the star in boxing, you got to come to the United States. It is what it is. You got to cross those seas. And you got to knock down, knock out some Americans to make these other Americans take notice of who you are and what you're doing. Furthermore, Leonard Ellerby, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions and a collaborator of Gervonta Davis, shared Porter's perspective. Jumping on X, responding to Porter's statement, Ellerby said, Sean, I know exactly where you're coming from. The young man is definitely a rock star in Japan and he's generating enormous revenue. But outside of the diehards, he's relatively unknown in the US where we actually live. I get it. In a way, quickly demonstrated to the former champion the truth of the issue in response to Porter's remark. Taking to X, the undefeated and undisputed super bantamweight champion wrote, the home of the lightweight division is now here in Japan. If you want to see the game, come to Japan. If there is something better than what is available in the Japanese market in America, I would be happy to go. That's all worth it here in Japan. As he addresses these remarks, the formidable monster Inoue is poised to step into the ring against the formidable Luis Neri on May 6th at the Tokyo Dome, Japan. This event marks the Dome's return to hosting boxing matches since the monumental upset where Buster Douglas triumphed over Mike Tyson. Neri is intent on making his mark in a similar fashion. Neri, the former two-weight world champion, spoke with boxing scene via a translator prior to his impending fight in Japan. He claimed, Inoue is a very good fighter, and this is the biggest fight of my career. Four titles are on the line, but I've seen his fights, and I think he's overrated. As per Neri's assessment, Inoue appears to be a conventional combatant based on the bouts he's observed thus far. However, Neri went on to unveil his game plan for securing victory in the upcoming fight during the interview. He said, I hope it doesn't go to 12 rounds. I want it to end early. You will see a conditioned, stronger, faster, and intelligent Neri who hits hard. It's undisputed that the boxing landscape in America reigns supreme on a global scale. Meanwhile, fans have also expressed their opinion on this debate. For instance, one fan said, he is a bigger star than Tank. Boxing doesn't revolve around the US. Another added, he's selling out 55,000 seats. What he needs to come here for? He's the money in his division. They gotta come to him. But this fan has a different opinion. He said, we get it. Canelo could sell out 60,000 in Mexico and make the same PPVs, but he still comes to Vegas for the big fights. Now he's a household name everywhere. But Inoue doesn't have to. Similarly, Another fan chimed in saying, Unless there's a fight that pays more outside Japan, then it doesn't make sense to fight outside his country. Maybe at 126, he can fight the champs in the US with the Latino fan base, but both fighters still need to get the best money possible. And he's not fighting Tank. Impossible. On the other hand, promoter Bob Arum sang praises of undisputed super middleweight champion Naoya Inoue, likening him to the legendary Salvador Sanchez, a Mexican icon who captivated the American audience in the early 1980s until his untimely demise in a tragic car accident in August 1982. Aram perceives a distinctive quality in the 31-year-old monster, Inoue, that distinguishes him from Salvador Sanchez, his knack for knocking out a majority of his opponents. You know, it's, it's scary what, I've been, what I'm seeing. He so overwhelms his opponents, really good opponents, uh, that he's right, uh, I, that I've, I've never seen a fighter of that size uh, uh, perform 
uh, the way he has. In a way's opponents pale in comparison to the legendary fighters Salvador Sanchez faced in the boxing ring. By the age of 23, he had clashed with fighters of exceptional skill, far surpassing the challenges Inoue may ever encounter. Salvador's valor and determination exceeded anything witnessed in Inoue's realm. Sanchez fell short in a surprising turn earlier in his boxing journey, succumbing to the underdog prowess of Antonio Becerra. Additionally, his path intersected with another lesser-known boxer, Juan Escobar, resulting in a draw. Sanchez faced far tougher adversaries throughout his time in the ring compared to Inoue, and his fight tally exceeded Inoue's by a significant margin before his untimely demise at just 23. Despite being eight years older at 31, Inoue has substantially fewer fights under his belt than Sanchez's impressive 46. It's clear there's no parallel between the two. But Bob Arum has a different opinion. Maybe uh, a Salvador Sanchez uh, had that ability, but even then, he, he, he didn't win all his fights by knockout. Uh, Inoue goes into these fights, he boxes the guys, and then knocks them out. Throughout his career, Inoue has primarily faced opponents of middling skill. His most formidable adversary, Nonito Doneri, was already 40 years old when they clashed, yet managed to give Inoue a grueling battle in their initial encounter. It's clear that a younger Donaire would have likely dominated Inoue without breaking a sweat. However, Bob Arum told Fight Hub TV that he found what he was seeing to be scary. He observed that Naya Inoue overwhelmingly defeats his opponents, who are genuinely good opponents. Aram mentioned that he had never seen a fighter of that size perform in such a manner before. He suggested that perhaps Sanchez had a similar ability, but even then, Sanchez didn't win all his fights by knockout. Aram noted that Inoue enters these fights, boxes his opponents, and then knocks them out. out you know, this, it, it, with what we're seeing in Inoue is something really special. It's as special for boxing as Otani is for baseball. Another Japanese uh, athlete who is doing things in baseball that we've never seen before since Babe Ruth. We know that Naoya Inoue is poised to safeguard his undisputed super bantamweight title against the formidable Louis Neri. However, murmurs within the boxing community suggest discontent with this pairing. Critics point to Neri's past defeat at the hands of Brandon Figueroa in 2020, where he succumbed in the seventh round. Since that setback, Neri's opponents have been deemed by many as lacking in stature, as he has emerged victorious in his last four bouts against relatively modest opposition. However, Fernando Beltran, head of Xanfer Boxing and promoter of Neri, is already mapping out ambitious strategies. Beltran told Boxing Scene in an interview, So honestly, I feel very confident in this fight. It's a very good fight. I really believe that Neri is one of the best fighters, if not the best 122 pounders. I think Inoue will wait for Neri, and I believe Neri will win the fight. Meanwhile, Luis Neri is digging in his heels and embracing his role as the boogeyman who will blast and beat the monster. With a background as a former Titleist, in both the 118 and 122 pound divisions, Neri is confident in his ability to replicate such a monumental upset against his highly regarded adversary. Neri said, I've seen his fights, and I think he's overrated. I think he's an ordinary fighter, or at least that's how it appears to me. I'm going there looking for the knockout. I'm not going to Japan looking for a decision. Neri remains steadfastly unmoved and unaffected by Inoue's impressive list of achievements. Despite Inoue's reign as an undisputed champion at 118 pounds, his mass across four distinct weight divisions spanning the past decade, his recognition as the 2023 Fighter of the Year, and his universal acclaim as one of the top three pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world, Neri remains unimpressed. Neri added, I have the typical Mexican style. I like to come forward. I like throwing punches. I'm prepared to go 12 rounds, but I hope it doesn't go to 12 rounds. Neri faced Inoue during a kickoff press conference in Japan last month, giving him an opportunity to assess him in person as both players are 5'5". Five five. Neri said, he's physically a small fighter a normal fighter, just like the rest. It could be the upset of the year if I beat him. Inoue is not a dummy. He knows how to fight. He's not incredible in my opinion, but it can be a back-and-forth fight. Neri commented that he perceived Inoue as a fast and intelligent fighter with significant power. However, he also pointed out that Inoue's weak point is that he opens up when he throws punches. Neri added, I see that Inoue is a fast fighter. He's intelligent. He has a lot of power, apparently. Those are his strong points. His weak point is that he opens up when he throws, and that's where I come in. Neri mentioned that 
that from his fight with Hovanissian. He learned the importance of not being overconfident. He stated that he trained for 25 to 30 days for the Hovanissian fight, but will be training for nearly three months for his upcoming fight. Neri said, In the Hovanissian fight, I learned not to be overconfident. I trained for 25 to 30 days for Hovanissian. I'll be training for nearly three months for this fight. In the midst of it all, Inoue showcased remarkable prowess in 2023, effortlessly surpassing the then unified champions Stephen Fulton and Marlon Tapales. He dispatched Fulton in eight rounds and Tapales in ten, solidifying his status as the undisputed champion in the 122-pound division. Talking about this, Neri said, I saw the Tapales fight. Tapales is a B-rated fighter. To me, he's not good, and he lasted ten rounds and made things difficult for Inoue. Maybe Fulton is the best win of Inoue's career, but Fulton didn't throw that many punches. He was scared. On the other hand, the WBC has revealed its intention to introduce an honorary diamond belt into the mix. Yet, Neri boldly proclaimed his intention to secure the upset of the year by delivering a knockout blow to the formidable monster on Japanese soil. As per talk sport correspondent Michael Benson, other than the undisputed super bantamweight title, a WBC diamond belt will be in the line for Neri versus Inoue. Benson tweeted, The WBC have announced that a WBC diamond belt will be on the line for Naoya Inoue versus Luis Neri on May 6th, as well as Inoue's WBA, WBC, IBF, and WBO super bantamweight world titles. WBC statement says this was requested by Inoue. In this connection, Connection, one must mention that introduced in 2009. The Diamond Belt is an honorary title that is awarded to the winner of a historic fight. Throughout the annals of the sport, Manny Pacquiao emerged victorious over Miguel Cotto, claiming the inaugural WBC Diamond Belt. Meanwhile, during his bout with Dillian White, Tyson Fury insisted on the inclusion of a Diamond Belt in the stake. Meanwhile, as Inoue sets his sights on securing the coveted Diamond Belt at the Tokyo Dome, Neri harbors aspirations of orchestrating the upset of the year. It appears that Neri is fully embracing his persona persona as a villain in Japan. With a history colored by controversy in the country, Inoue's interest in facing him stems partly from a desire to settle the score for Neri's past transgressions. However, it appears that fans are not happy with the introduction of this diamond belt for the fight. This fan said, The WBC needs to stop with these belts. I know damn well Inoue didn't request this shit. And this fan added, Look at this gay belt. Why can't we have one WBC regular belt like the UFC has? I love to hate the UFC, but Dana White is a genius. One regular belt per division but this fan seems to have a problem with the belt. The fan said, Everyone is complaining. This belt has been around for a while and is usually ordered for big fights like this. Not a big deal and cut the extra belt crap. If anything, Inoue would carry this around as a replacement to his actual WBC belt. But I guess you all can complain. Moving on, we know that in 2017, Neri clinched a triumphant fourth-round technical knockout against the enduring Japanese bantamweight champion, Shinsuke Yamanaka, in Kyoto. Yet, Neri's victory was marred by a subsequent positive test for clenbuterol, a banned substance, casting a shadow over his achievement. The WBC later clarified that the presence of clenbuterol stemmed from contamination, adding a layer of complexity to the situation. During the 2018 rematch against Yamanaka on Japanese soil, Neri encountered more hurdles as he tipped the scales three pounds over the designated limit. Consequently, he had to relinquish his title and received a lifetime ban from the Japanese Boxing Commission. Even so, Neri was able to knock out Yamanaka again, this time in just two rounds, and Yamanaka had hasn't engaged in combat since. Neri said, I didn't pay attention or care too much to the fact that the Japanese Boxing Commission banned me. People over there saw it was lucrative for me to fight Inoue, so that's why they lifted the ban. Maybe Inoue is taking this fight personally. It doesn't matter what he does or thinks, because what's done is done, and you can't erase that from history. Neri is similarly unconcerned about having to fight with minimal assistance on the other side of the globe. He warned that a surprise is coming, emphasizing that he has been training hard. He believes it was a mistake for Inoue's team to accept this fight, as they have nothing to gain and are only doing it for honor. Neri said, More than anything, it's more calm for me, actually. I'm not undefeated. I'm not the champion. Win or lose, no problem. He has the risk. There is no rematch clause. It's because he's overconfident. He thinks that an easy win is coming, but a surprise is coming. I've been training hard. It's going to be a mistake that they accepted this fight. They have nothing to win. They are doing it for honor, but they are going to regret taking this fight. However, Neri's arrogance and assurance don't match the way bookies see the bout. According to DraftKings, Inoue is a 1,400 betting favorite and Neri is a plus 800 betting underdog. The fight's over or under is fixed at 6.5 
five rounds. But Neri stated that he doesn't know which punch or which round, but he is certain that the fight will end in a knockout. He believes that either he will knock out Inoue or Inoue will knock him out. Neri said, he probably has the chin to take my power. We saw him take Nonito Donaire's punches in their 2019 fight. Donaire hit him and hurt him, but I am younger than Donaire and will be able to pressure Inoue. It will be another story for me. Following the skirmish with Hovanissian in February 2023, a previous sparring partner of Inoue, Neri opted for a tune-up bout, securing a swift victory via knockout within two rounds in July in Mexico. Neri experienced his sole professional defeat in 2021 at the hands of Brandon Figueroa, succumbing to a seventh-round knockout from a punishing body shot. This loss cost Neri the 122-pound WBC title, now held by Inoue. Following numerous transitions between coaches and struggles with weight management over the years, Neri claims to have finally steered his career back on course. How much longer, though, is yet unknown. Neri expressed, I've been focused more in recent fights, and you've seen that. Things have gone well. If all comes out as planned, as I understand, there could be a fight against Murojon Akhmadaliev, and that would be my last fight. I will retire. Boxing is very boring to me in my life right now. According to another latest report, Luis Neri is determined to take down Naoya Inoue. Neri had secured the coveted mandatory position for the WBC Super Bantamweight Championship. This achievement came on the heels of his electrifying victory over Azat Crazy A. Hovanissian, sealed with a stunning 11th round knockout. Talking about it, Neri gave some interesting comments to Fight Hub TV. Yeah, of course I was surprised. I, I thought I was going to knock him out in uh, the round fifth, the fifth, round, fifth round. But we work for the fifth round, and we, if we didn't knock him out in the fifth, fifth round, we were going to go after him. In the later rounds. Neri then expressed that he is targeting Inoue, considering it a significant fight, and his intention is to finish him. When asked for a prediction about his fight with Monster Inoue, Neri confidently stated that he sees the fight ending by knockout. He noted that Inoue is a brave fighter who stands in front of his opponents, and Neri does the same. Therefore, he believes the outcome will be a knockout. We're looking, we're looking for Inoue, we think it's a big fight, and we're gonna finish him. I see the fight uh, going by knockout. Uh, he's, he's a fighter who goes uh, in front of you, and uh, he's a brave fighter, and I, am, I do the same thing, so it will be a knockout. On the other hand, there were some rumors about a potential fight between Gervonta Davis and Naoya Inoue. However, it appears that the paths of Davis and Inoue might not cross in the boxing arena just yet. But a compelling rivalry for their respective star statuses is igniting across the digital realm. Surprisingly, it all kicked off with a bold declaration from Sean Porter. His contention, as I explained earlier, Porter said that Inoue must step into the ring against an American opponent on American soil, and Leonard Ellerby feels the same way. However, fans appear to have been debating who is more popular as a result of this, and Ellerby finally responded witty to end the argument. Following Ellerby's tweet, a commenter chimed in, proposing that, much like Ellerby's perception of Inoue, the broader audience beyond boxing enthusiasts remains oblivious to Gervonta Davis's acclaim and accomplishments. The fan tweeted, No one outside of boxing fans knows who Tank is. Stop it. Though there's a grain of truth in the commenter's observation, Ellerby held a divergent perspective. In a tweet responding to the user, Ellerby wrote, That's your opinion, but it's okay. You would know you've done countless shows, and I know you have all the metrics to back what you said. It's worth mentioning that Davis's fight against Ryan Garcia still remains one of the biggest spectacles of recent years, raking in $100 million in revenue. Despite what some fans may believe, Leonard Ellerby appears to to be certain that Gervonta Davis is the most well-liked fighter in the world. On the other hand, speaking before a group of reporters together with Inoue's father and trainer Shingo Inoue and the gym's head Hideyuki Ohashi, Inoue commented that he believes his performance has improved since he first won a world title in 2014. He feels it is fate that he can have a fight at the Tokyo Dome 10 years later. Inoue said, I think I have improved my performance ever since I first won a world title in 2014. It is fate that I can have a fight at Tokyo Dome 10 years later. This year also falls on Ohashi Gym's 30th anniversary since its foundation, which will motivate me all the more. Moreover, Inoue commented on Neri, noting that while people often focus only on his offense, he believes Neri can take a punch and has defensive technique, including a sense of position in space. Inoue mentioned that to handle Neri, he thinks he will need to stick to his boxing while maintaining his distance. Inoue said, while we tend to look only at his offense, I think he can take a punch and has defensive technique. To cope with him, I think I will have to stick to my boxing while keeping my distance. Inoue's trainer, Shingo, mentioned that if Inoue can outclass Neri's boxing with concentration, he believes Inoue can execute his moves effectively. Shingo added that Inoue is adept at doing this within one round. Shingo said, if he can 
can outclass Neri's boxing with concentration, I think he can input his moves. Inoue is good at doing that in one round. Despite the ongoing debate and speculation surrounding the fight, one thing is certain. Both Inoue and Neri are preparing rigorously for what promises to be a thrilling showdown. Make sure to check out some of our other videos on the screen if you enjoyed this one.